Hey everybody, it is Zach here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my Get Rich with Hunter guide, another installation of our Get Rich with Skilling videos that have been knocking out. Uh, Hunter is one of the less popular skills in the game. Training Hunter tends to be very click intensive, and there's not a lot of benefits to having a high Hunter level. Hunter tends to be pretty fast to train though, making it very easy to get yourself to those high levels and start making money, which does add up pretty well for skilling money making. If you have been enjoying these guides, or just getting some useful information out of it, be sure to like and subscribe for more content, as it very much helps the video out. Also, if you're enjoying the content in general, I do stream on Twitch, which should be linked on the screen and in the description, so be sure to follow me on the Twitch side of things. Thank you very much for the support, everybody. Before we talk about Hunter, let's talk about Hunter traps real quick. Most Hunter activities do require a tool of some sort to actually hunt with, like a box trap, a bird snare, even a butterfly net. Uh, these are all tradable, so you can just buy them off the Grand Exchange, but there's also a Hunter shop in Yanil, the town south of Arduin, which sells a lot of Hunter traps. There's also a spell on the Lunar Spellbook, which spawns a Hunter kit that has one of each kind of trap that you might use. And to make another Hunter kit, you have to drop off a trap. The spell won't let you make another kit if you already had one, uh, but you're going to use more than one trap anyway. So in general, buying your traps from the Grand Exchange is the way to go. Things like bird snares, small fishing nets, ropes, box traps, stuff like that. Uh, just buy them from the GE. As usual, we're going to start out with the early levels for anybody who hasn't done any Hunter training quite yet. Uh, there's not as many quests that give Hunter XP when you complete them, but the Natural History Museum quiz does take just a couple of minutes to complete and gives you a thousand Hunter and Slayer XP, which will jump you from level 1 to level 9. You can take the quiz by talking to Orlando Smith, who is located in the basement of the Varrock Museum. If you are on Runelight, Runelight's going to highlight the correct answer of the quiz in green. Uh, if not, I suggest going to the OSRS Wikis page about the Natural Museum quiz to get the correct answer. From level 9 Hunter, you'll have to start actually catching things. You can catch Copper Longtails from 9 to 19. They are located in the Piscatoris Hunter area on the northwestern side of the map. Uh, but you can also find them on the Isle of Souls and in the Corin Woodlands. There's a couple areas with Copper Longtails. You're only going to be able to set up one trap at a time at this point, which is pretty annoying. But 19 Hunter is very quick to get to. At 19 Hunter, you can move to the Feldip Hills Hunter area south of Castle Wars and use Bird Snares to catch Tropical Wagtails. At level 20, you will be able to place a second trap, so bring a couple of traps with you. I would take this to 29 Hunter and then move on to Swamp Lizards. You do need to complete Priest in Peril to catch Swamp Lizards and they are located just southeast of the town of Canifus. You do need a small fishing net and a rope to set up a net trap on one of these little trees. You'll be able to place three traps at a time by 40 Hunter so you want to bring a few ropes and small fishing nets. I find it very easy to lose your ropes and small fishing nets while doing uh, net trapping so I would bring like five of each of them. From here on out, for any leveling up you want to do outside of the money-making methods that we're about to get into, you really just keep doing net trapping. You can do Swamp Lizards until 47 Hunter, then you can move on to Orange Salamanders. These are located in the desert, so don't forget to bring your water skins with you. And at level 59 Hunter, you can move on to Red Salamanders, which are located by the ZMI Altar. This is just north of Castle Wars, so it's very easy to travel there using a Ring of Dueling. At this point, we're hitting high enough levels to be making some money, so let's jump into the actual good stuff. First, let's talk about Birdhouses, which actually only require 5 Hunter and 5 Crafting to get started, so you could potentially skip all of that bird catching and whatnot. I guess with Birdhouses, it's still bird catching, but it's very passive, solid uh, Hunter XP. Think of it similar to, like, Herb Runs, but for Hunter. If you hate Herb Runs, then they may not sounds so appetizing but it takes a lot less time to do one birdhouse run than it does to do a single herb run. Uh, birdhouses can be set up on Fossil Island which means you have to complete the Bone Voyage quest. There are four spots that you can set up a birdhouse on the island. To make a birdhouse you're going to need logs, a clockwork, and some crafting level requirements. The clockwork is a tradable item that can be made in your house on a crafting table too. You can just buy it from the Grand Exchange though if you're not an Iron Man. You'll only need four total clockworks as you always get the clockwork back when you go to loot a birdhouse. With a hammer and a chisel in your inventory, if you use logs on a clockwork, you're going to make a birdhouse out of it as long as you have the right crafting level. This birdhouse can be placed in a birdhouse spot with some hunter requirements and then filled up with seeds to slowly catch birds. At the moment, you can only use hop seeds to fill up your birdhouses, but a question just past the poles that's going to allow us to use allotment, bush, and flower seeds. Higher tier seeds don't help your loot, but higher tier birdhouses do give you more bird's nests overall. Birdhouses take 50 minutes to fill up, so you can take a birdhouse run about every hour. A birdhouse run takes only about 2 minutes to complete. It also takes you like a minute or so to get set up at the bank. Even though you only have to take a couple items out of the bank for a birdhouse run, getting faster at grabbing those items and heading to Fossil Island is going to make a big difference on your runs in general. 2-3 to three minutes per run would mean 20-30 to 30 birdhouse runs per hour. Obviously you can't actually do multiple runs per hour, so this is just an effective rate. But you could do about 20 birdhouse runs and it would take you about an hour's worth of in-game time. Just 
spread out over a couple days, maybe one day if you're absolutely gaming. The amount of money that you make per birdhouse run is going to vary depending on what tier birdhouse that you're using and how high your hunter level is. Higher tier houses do give more nests, but higher tier houses don't affect what seed nests you're going to get at all. It just gives you a better chance to get more empty nests and then nests with like rings in them and stuff like that. The empty nests are the most consistent part of the money making, but the seed nest is a very nice bonus. It could have a very good tree seed in it, like a magic seed or even a dragon fruit tree seed. You don't make a lot of profit from a single birdhouse run, but it only takes a couple of minutes to grab all your stuff, uh, use the dig site pendant to teleport over there, and knock out a quick birdhouse run every hour or so, and you'll get very consistent money and hunter XP, so I do suggest knocking out those birdhouse runs. Next, for hunter money making, we're going to get a little bit of impling hunting going. Uh, I have an impling hunting guide that will be linked in the description. That guide's going to go into a lot further detail than I'll go right here about actually catching implings. Uh, to make good money from catching implings, you're going to need to do it in Puro Puro. To get to Puro Puro, you have to enter the center of the crop circle in Xanris. There is also going to be a portal to Puro Puro in a random crop, like in the overworld, that changes every 30 minutes. So technically, you don't have to do Lost City to have access to Puro Puro, but it's basically a requirement requirement if you want to make good money here. There's a couple of ways to make money from catching implings in Pearl Pearl. I'm just going to start with collecting empty impling jars though. Empty jars currently sell on the Grand Exchange for right about 750 GP. You can collect empty impling jars in a few different ways. You can turn in any impling that you have caught for three empty jars at Elnok the Inquisitor located in the center of Pearl Pearl. Baby impling jars are like 1.4k at the moment so technically you could just go buy a bunch of baby implings and then trade them in for three empty jars, sell them back on the GE, no hunter levels required. I would prefer to just buy a couple of empty jars, go catch my own implings, trade those jars in for more empties, and just stack up a bunch of them while getting a little bit of hunter XP. As you catch higher level implings, it's technically a little bit better off just to sell those high level implings, so I would only trade in like baby, young, gourmet, earth, and essence implings directly for jars. Baby implings require 17 hunters, so you can get started with this at pretty low hunter level, but at 42 you can catch essence implings, and then all the other ones I listed off are under that, and it'll be pretty easy to catch those low level implings. So 42 is a pretty solid start for collecting impling jars. There is also an item called the Jar Generator that you can get from Elnok for 3 Essence Implings, 2 Eclectics, and 1 Nature. Uh, the Jar Generator has 100 charges, and it's 3 charges per Impling Jar, or just 1 charge for a Butterfly Jar, which is a lot cheaper. Uh, it costs about 22k worth of Implings to get 24k worth of Impling Jars at the moment if you use that Generator. So in terms of doing this for profit, I would avoid using the Jar Generator and stick to just catching low-level Implings and turning them in for empty Jars. Now let's talk about actually catching Implings rather than just collecting those empty Jars. At level 50 Hunter, you can start to catch Eclectic Implings. Eclectics can be open for a 1 in 25 chance at a medium clue, which makes them very nice for trying to grind out Ranger Boots. You could open your Eclectics and then get some Rangers, but the money-making method we're talking about here would just be selling off those eclectic implings that you've stacked up. This is a good time to mention the magic butterfly net, which does help successfully catching any impling. If you bring three gourmet implings, two earth implings, and an essence impling to Elnok, he'll exchange them for a magic butterfly net. The magic butterfly net gives a 7.8% increased chance to catch implings, which is pretty nice for how easy it is to get. At the moment, eclectic implings are about 4k more than just an empty jar, so you're looking at about 4k profit every time you catch an eclectic impling. You should be using dark lure if you have done the Kingdom Divided quest, and even buying spells in the regular spell book is going to help you out a little bit. It does cost a little bit more money to be using runes, but it's going to increase your catches per hour, so it's very worth using the money on runes to use those spells. You can catch 25 to 27 Eclectics per inventory, depending on whether or not you have the rune pouch to hold your spells. Right at 50 Hunter, you're going to fail a lot of catches, so I do suggest an extra 10 levels if you're really annoyed with Impling Hunting at 50. Uh, with higher Hunter level, you can get those 25 Implings in about 5 minutes at a max pace, which would be 300 Eclectics per hour. So 250 to 300 Eclectics per hour is very doable at High Hunter, which currently would be 1 mil to 1.2 mil GP an hour from catching Eclectics. Even at low levels, you should be able to pull off like 500k GP an hour once you get a rhythm of catching those Eclectics, standing at one of the spawn points, and just catching it as many times as you can. Uh, it's not great for XP gains, but not every method can be really good cash and really good for leveling up. At least this one makes you some money. Now we're going to move on to some Chinchampa hunting. At 63 Hunter, you can start start catching red chinchampas. Like many hunting activities, it's going to be slow right at the required level since you're still missing a lot of catches. If you find yourself getting frustrated with those slow catches, then it's not a bad idea to head back to red salamanders to get some better XP for a little while. Uh, you will need to complete 
Eagle's Peak quest to be able to put down a box trap, but it is very quick and easy to do that quest. You unlock the ability to place four traps at 60 Hunter, and you'll be able to place five traps at 80 Hunter. No matter how many you can place down, I do suggest bringing extra box traps, though. If you disconnect or you get distracted by something for too long, it's very easy to just lose a couple of those box traps, and there's nothing more frustrating than having to bank for more traps and waste your time. There are a couple of places that you can catch red chinchampas. I am using the Feldup Hills Hunter area in this clip here. It's the same area that I was telling you to go catch tropical wagtails in the early levels. There's also a location in the elven area out west, but the main benefit of that is it's easier to find an empty world, and chinchampas are not as packed as they used to be, so I prefer just going to Feldup Hills. There's also a cave in the Feldup Hills area that leads to the red chinchampa hunting grounds, which has a lot more chinchampas in a much more confined space. But to have access to this cave, you do need to complete the hard western province diaries, which does make it even easier to find an open world. There's really no bots in there. Chinchampas are currently just under 1k a piece, which is definitely on their low end. They've reached up to 1.7k a piece in the past. Also, one of the most recent add-ons in the game is the Venator Bow. This bow uses an attack that bounces off multiple monsters, which is really where Chinchampas shine as a weapon, is fighting multiple monsters. So Jagex is trying to make a bow that really does what Chinchampas do, which is not a great sign for Chinchampa price. I also think it could be a potential hint towards some upcoming boss fights. If Jagex is adding a bow that does well on multiple monsters, some of the upcoming bosses they're adding to the game might have multiple monsters during the fight to try to make that new bow better, unless maybe Jagex has already given up on the Venator bow. Uh, with all that being said, 1k per red chinchampa, it's very easy to calculate your profit. At low levels, you're getting 150 to 200 chins an hour, which is pretty weak, but with High Hunter, you can double that very easily. Bringing a short bow and some arrows can also speed it up too. If you knock out a chinchampa that just reset a trap and ran away, you can make it spawn back near the trap in just a couple of seconds instead of waiting around for a while. This still lands anywhere from 200k to 500k GP an hour without any tick manipulation, which is much lower than red chinchapas have been in the past, but maybe that's more of a reason to upgrade to the next method. At 73 Hunter, you can start catching black chinchampas. These are located in the wilderness, which does add some risk, but they are also a lot more expensive than red chinchampas. In the wilderness, you can place an extra trap while hunting, so if you're 73 to 79 Hunter still, you're able to place five traps instead of the four you normally would, and then once you get 80 Hunter, when you normally could place five traps now, you'll actually get to place a sixth trap, which is very nice. Right at 73 Hunter, you're going to be missing a lot of catches compared to high levels, so it's not a bad option to keep training at Red Salamanders to like 80 Hunter, but even at 73, you should make better money than you were making at Red Chinchapas, as long as you're not getting PK'd, of course. Since you do have the added risk of getting PK'd, you do not want to stack up quite as many Chinchapas without banking, as it would really suck to lose like a few hour of gains just because one PK'er showed up. It's also a good idea to wear some tanky gear, at the very least, some black dehyde armor does really well for magic defense, but the Din's bulwark is very brave broken for tanking, so if you are going to take this hunting method seriously, it's a pretty good investment to grab that Din's Bulwark. Having a good teleport out, like a Royal Seed Pod or a Charged Amulet of Glory, does go a long way for escaping PKers too. Again, at low levels, you're managing like 150 to 200 Black Chinchampas an hour, and when you're closer to 99 Hunter, you're like 350 to 400 Black Chinchampas an hour. If you were to bring an Herb and some Tar and you do 3 Tick Hunter out there, you can even double the rates after that, but that is very click intensive, and then hoarding up that many Chinchampas at once is pretty sketch, so you really should bank trip when you've done that many, and taking a bank trip slows down your catches per hour. Overall, Black Chinchampas are about 2.5k a piece while making this video, so we're looking at anywhere from 375k up to 1 mil GP an hour. That would be without the 3 ticking hunter. Be careful of those PKers though. Let's move back to a safer method that also doesn't include any box traps. At 80 Hunter, you can start catching herbivores. This does require 31 Herblore too. 31 Herblore is not that bad to get to, but it turns out higher Herblore level is going to help you out. Herbivore hunting can only be done on Fossil Island, so you have to complete Bone Voyage quests just like you did with Bird Houses. Herbivore falls under the tracking category, so you don't have to set up any traps or anything. You will need a pair of Secateurs to harvest from the Herbivore though. Magic Secateurs do give you bonus herbs, so it's highly suggested to bring your Magic Secateurs. If you you are on Runelight, the Herbivore plugin is very convenient for making this pretty brain dead, but after like 20 to 25 KC, even without the plugin, you'll notice there's only like a handful of paths really that the Herbivore could take, so overall it's pretty brain dead either way. 
but the Runelight Herbivore plugin is nice. If you've never done any tracking hunter before, it's very simple. You're going to click on a rock, a log, maybe a mushroom to get started. The starting points are marked on your mini map with a hunter symbol. So any place that you can start a hunt, it's marked with a hunter symbol. The Runelight plugin will also highlight it blue for you. Click on the first spot and some footprints will appear and you can follow those footprints to the next spot that you can investigate. You get a little bit of hunter XP anytime that you uncover some more footprints other than the last time that you uncover footprints before you catch the herbivore. So if you investigate a location, you uncover more footprints and you don't get a hunter XP drop, that means that you are now headed to that herbivore. That's like the last spot to go to. You attack the tunnel at the end of the path, go ahead and stun the herbivore, and then harvest some herbs from its back. The higher your herbivore level, the better herbs that you get from herbivore. Unfortunately, it doesn't max out at a lot of GP an hour, looking at like 300k to 400k GP an hour with high herbivore, magic second tours, and maxing out your pace on how many herbivores you're harvesting an hour, which you can get up to like 65. This method is pretty nice for XP, and you do make a profit, but not really enough to get rich, so let's go ahead and move on. For the last method I'm talking about here, we are headed back to Implings. Catching Dragon Implings requires 83 Hunter to get started. You can only catch a handful of Dragon Implings every hour. It's not like you can just catch them over and over again like those Eclectic Implings. So having higher Hunter is not as big of a deal as it was for those lower level ones that you're trying to catch over and over again. But if you do find somebody else is trying to catch that same Dragon Impling that you are, having a higher Hunter level gives you a little bit better chance to win the battle. Nothing worse than swiping at a Dragon Impling, missing it, and then somebody else gets it. This category of the guide really could just be catching high level implings on its own. It doesn't just have to be dragon implings. Dragon imps are the most fun to find and catch, but really just stacking up ninja and magpie implings is still very profitable. I even tend to catch a lot of nature implings because uh, natures, magpies, ninjas, dragons, and even lucky implings, they all share the same spawn point. So when you catch uh, nature impling in a certain world in Puro Puro, it's going to help get rid of some of those rare spawns so that more rare implings can spawn in, potentially a dragon impling. I did bring up my impling catching guide before. Now, if you're looking for a deeper dive on how to catch dragon implings and all that stuff that I was just talking about there, I do have that full impling catching guide linked in the description. The amount of dragon implings that you can find per hour can definitely vary since there is some RNG involved, but finding two to three dragon implings in one hour is generally pretty easy as long as there's not a lot of bots, and of course, you could get unlucky. There's not a lot of hours that I've found less than two dragon implings, but I've definitely gone an hour without like finding anything. And then very lucky hours, you can see five or six dragon implings. Sometimes maybe somebody has sniped one from you. But still, like a few dragon implings in an hour is very solid. Dragon implings are currently 367k a piece. So only three dragon implings in an hour and you're over 1 mil GP profit. That combined with the ninja implings and the magpies that you found, 1.3 mil to 1.5 mil an hour is very doable. And then if you get lucky on like two more dragon implings in the hour, you can peak over 2 mil an hour at the moment. But with 83 Hunter, I'd say you're looking at more like 1 mil GP an hour at once you get in the flow here, which really the flow, that's just about like hopping worlds, checking the corners of the room, hopping worlds again. I am a big fan of catching dragon implings because it's the least repetitive of these money makers, even though the description I just gave didn't sound as good. Like I said, there's a lot of world hopping, but every 20 minutes or so, you get like a pretty hype moment of actually catching that dragon impling, even spotting one. I mean, maybe sometimes somebody took it from you, but when you're catching chinchampas, you're just clicking on boxes. Like there's never that big of a moment that happens unless maybe you're doing black chinchampas and you get PK'd, which really blows. So you don't want to see that anyway. Or maybe you get the Chinchampa pet, which is awesome, but it's extremely rare, and it's really only cool the first time it happens. Every time you find a Dragon Impling, it's fun. There's that little bit of dopamine when you see that Dragon Impling highlight. So I do enjoy this grind more than many other Hunter gains. With that all being said, there are a lot of players that don't enjoy hunting Dragon Implings, so it really all depends on who you ask. Before you get super hyped up on getting hours and hours of Dragon Impling grind, uh, you know, take an hour there, see how much you like it. I am a big fan of it, so maybe I'll see you there sometime. I think that is everything that I wanted to talk about when it comes to getting rich with Hunter, everyone. As you can see, Hunter does not peak out as quite as much money compared to the other skill and get rich videos that I've been putting out, which is part of the reason that it came out after all the others. It's definitely not as enticing for overall GP an hour. Hunter XP is fast, so it is easy to get to those good money makers and requires really no money to get into it as Hunter traps are extremely cheap. Jagex has been doing a good job updating skills that have been lackluster, mostly with skilling bosses like Temporos, Zulcano, uh, Guardians of the Rift, even Winter Todd, but also some like non-skilling boss updates like the Hallowed Sepulchre, Tithe Farm, even Mahogany Homes. I think it is time that Hunter could get a nice buff to it. A new interesting hunting method that gave some sort of supply that could be used elsewhere, similar to how Chinchampas are used 
use for ranging. Uh, that way the supply would be in demand and it would be good for money. Uh, that would be nice for the making money with Hunter Life and maybe it would take away some of the hate that the skill does get. Thank you very much for watching this Get Rich with Hunter guide, everyone. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the guide or you just got some useful information out of it, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. I do stream on Twitch, which should be linked on the screen and in the description. And I also have a Discord, which is linked in the description. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and best of luck with your Hunter money-making grinds.